welcome to BMC. I'm Dr. M. Today we are going to cover canine osteoarthritis. Your own veterinary team will need to select what specific options are best for your individual dog. Those recommendations can vary based on the specific joint or joints affected, the specific contributing disease processes, if there are any, as well as the rest of your dog's medical history. So join me, you'll learn something today. The specific best options will vary based on your individual situation, your dog's medical history, what options your veterinarian has access to, as well as your financial situation and so on. I'm just going to cover the very common management options that we have and that we use for many of our osteoarthritis patients. The first part of lifestyle that we'll address is exercise. For these dogs, regular low impact exercise is crucial. These dogs need daily Snafari style walks where they're doing a lot of walking and trotting, where it's controlled and they're not doing a lot of quick changes in direction. That is far better for them than one long hike on the weekend or going to a dog park, having that regular low impact exercise is crucial. We also need to be very aware of the nail length of our dogs. If the nails are too long, they will touch the ground too frequently. This will change the position of the dog's paw as it weight bears, which will cause more pain and compensation throughout their body. So making sure we're keeping nail length short is very important. We also need to keep on top of any long hair they might have between their pads as trimming that back can help them a bit more with grip. We also need to consider modifications to the home. We need to have runners or yoga mats, carpet, in all the areas where the dog is walking so that they have better traction and grip. This also means on stairs and for some dogs, we might need to reduce stairs as well. Jumping up and down into vehicles and onto beds or couches may also need to be avoided. And so getting an appropriate ramp can be a very, very helpful modification to make for your dog. Any dog beds that you have need to be memory foam style. There is actually one dog bed that has research behind it showing it helps to reduce pain for osteoarthritis. Considering those types of dog beds is very important and can make a dramatic difference in their quality of life. Next, we also need to consider harnesses, especially for dogs that are having weakness, you know, in the back end or the front end. Using a help them up harness can be a game changer. It's a dramatic help and that will allow you to help your dog uh, with things like stairs. If there's no way to avoid them, it can also help with things like getting up after laying down or when posturing to eliminate. All of these areas can become more difficult for the dog as they get more painful and if they're losing muscle mass. It's also incredibly important to work with a rehab or fitness professional who is evidence-based. There are veterinarians who specialize in rehab and consulting one of them can be very helpful. There are also some other fitness professionals that are evidence-based and can be incredibly helpful. The reason why you need to work with one of those professionals is because they can help with programs to maintain muscle mass. Things like an underwater treadmill can be very helpful. There can also be fitness programs in order to help the dog build up the muscle around the joint after a surgery to help reduce the compensation that the dog is doing, to help them maintain flexibility, to help them maintain range of motion in their joints. All of these things are crucial components to the overall well-being of the dog. And the enrichment of learning new skills and bonding with people can also help to reduce the chronic pain. Having enrichment is very important when you can enjoy other parts of life, it reduces the toll that chronic pain takes. And so the better we can manage this for our dogs, the longer their quality of life can remain good. As part of the rehabilitation and fitness plan, massage might be considered. Now we don't have a ton of research on dogs for this, but 
If the dog is doing a lot of compensating and has tight muscles because of that, having someone doing some massage might be helpful for some dogs. As we already covered, osteoarthritis tends to be a progressive disease. Because of that, it is crucial to be tracking quality of life. I encourage people to track their pet's quality of life for the entire time that they have the pet and just increase the frequency of that assessment as the dog becomes more painful and has more concerning symptoms popping up. We need to be very proactive about this because we don't want our dogs to suffer and whenever we note a decline in quality of life we need to address it. That might mean adding in additional pain management as time passes. That might mean changing the rehab plan that your dog is going through. There are often things that we can adjust in order to improve quality of life, but at some point there will come a time, whether it's from arthritis pain or something else, that your dog's quality of life is suffering. And when we're unable to manage that anymore, we do need to consider humane euthanasia in order to prevent our dogs from continuing to suffer. While not an easy topic to discuss, euthanasia can be such a gift that we can give to our dogs so that we can ease their suffering in a humane and kind way. As GP veterinarians, we all tend to have our areas of strength and weaknesses. For example, I dislike working on dental things. That is like my least favorite thing to do. Thankfully, I work with colleagues who love it and I can give those sorts of patients to my colleagues as they enjoy it and learn more about the recent research about these procedures and will just do a better job than I would. The same goes for chronic pain management and for osteoarthritis diagnosis and treatment. You might need to see an orthopedic specialist about this if your GP veterinarian isn't current on the research that's out there. There's just so much research that's coming out all the time that it's impossible to keep up with it all. You might also just need to consider another GP veterinarian. Sometimes that's appropriate as well or getting a second opinion. Don't hesitate to do those things and don't hesitate to strongly advocate for what your dog needs. Our very frequent experience in veterinary medicine is that when we try to bring up that we think a dog is experiencing pain, often people get upset and defensive or they brush it off or they refuse to consider any investigation or treatment. So when we do find people who really want to do the very best possible, it is a wonderful thing. But not every veterinarian is going to have the skill set to help you. So make sure to keep advocating for what your dog needs and find the team that can help you. It's not always easy to be that advocate, but your dog relies on you and I know that you can do a wonderful job for them. The fact that you've made it this far through this video indicates that you really want to. I am going to put in the video description the other videos I've already done. I'm also going to put in there the canine conditioning Facebook group that's very research based. And I'm also going to put some other resources in there about canine arthritis. There are a number of excellent sources of additional information if you want to do more reading or if you're looking for ways to track quality of life and look for symptoms of pain. If you have a future video topic suggestion, definitely comment that down below. I always love to get those suggestions. I'll make sure to cover feline arthritis in the future as the disease process symptoms and treatments are quite different for our cats compared to our dogs and I put out a new video most Fridays so I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye for now!